Imagine building the best fighter jet in history. It flies faster, turns harder, and stays invisible better than anything else. Then, the Pentagon looks at it and says, No thanks. We're killing it. That is exactly what happened to the F-23. Stick around, because what you are about to discover will change how you see military power. You've probably heard the legend. In the early 90s, two planes fought for the title of the world's first stealth fighter, the YF-22 and the YF-23. Most pilots who flew both will tell you the YF-23 was faster and more stealthy. It was a beast, but it was killed. Why? To answer that, we have to look at how America just pulled off a secret win against China. While everyone was looking at concept drawings, the Air Force was secretly flying sixth-generation prototypes for five years. This smart move is how they avoided the disaster of the F-35 program, which was billions over budget and years late. The big secret is something called risk reduction. The Pentagon learned the hard way that betting everything on unproven tech is a nightmare. With the new F-47, Boeing won the contract because they already proved the design worked in secret. The F-23 was seen as too risky back then. It was too different. And that brings us to our first big point, range. The F-22 Raptor is a legend, but it has a massive weakness that nobody likes to talk about. It can only fly about 590 nautical miles before it needs gas. In a fight over the Pacific, that's a huge problem. China has been building anti-access zones to keep American jets away. If your jet can't reach the target, it doesn't matter how good it is. The F-23 was built with more room for fuel, which gave it a massive advantage in range. The new F-47 is doubling down on this. It has a combat radius of over 1,000 nautical miles. That is nearly double what the F-22 can do. It can fly deep into enemy zones, finish the job, and get home without ever needing a tanker. This makes China's entire strategy useless. The Navy is doing the same thing with the F-A-20. They want 25% more range than the Super Hornet, looking at over 1,900 nautical miles of reach. Range isn't just a number, it is survival. If the F-23 were flying today, its extra fuel would have made it a king in the Pacific. But back. In the 90s, we were thinking about Europe, not the vast ocean. Now, let's talk about the 360-degree problem. This is a concept that the new B-21 Raider just perfected. The old B-2 Spirit was a ghost, but only if you looked at it from the front. If a radar hit it from the side or back, it could be spotted. Modern warfare doesn't happen in straight lines anymore. Enemy sensors are everywhere. The B-21 Raider changed the game with 360-degree stealth. It disappears from every angle. The F-23 had a similar edge. Its tail design was way more stealthy from more angles than the F-22. But again, the military went with the safer choice. They wanted a plane that could dogfight like a traditional jet. They chose maneuverability over ultimate stealth. But was that the right call? Today we see the F-47 using something called Stealth++. This isn't just about hiding from radar. It is about thermal management and AI-assisted visual tracking. We are using carbon-carbon composites and materials that make the jet harder to spot even with infrared sensors. Think about the radar signature of these new planes. Experts say the B-21 looks like a mosquito on a radar screen. Not a bird, not a ball, a mosquito. Try finding a mosquito with a flashlight in your backyard at night. That is what enemy operators are facing now. The F-23 was heading in that direction decades ago, but it was ahead of its time. There's another reason the F-23 was killed, the industrial base. This sounds boring, but it is the reason some jets live and others die. Right now, the Navy's F-A-X-X fighter is on life support. Why? Because the government decided they can only afford to go fast on one program at a time. They chose the Air Force's F-47 as the priority. They don't think the American factories can handle building two different sixth-generation fighters at once. This is the same trap the F-23 fell into. Building it would have been a massive strain on the system. The military likes commonality. 
Look at the F-35, one airframe for the Air Force, Navy, and Marines. It saves money on parts and training. When you have a family of engines or planes, everything gets easier. We can see this in history with the Detroit diesel engines. They built the Series 71, which was like a Lego set. You could have a two-cylinder version for small gear or a 24-cylinder monster for a ship, but the pistons and injectors were the same. That modular design made them legends. They were indestructible because anyone could fix them with basic tools. But even those legends died when the world changed. New rules about noise and smoke made the old two-stroke designs a nuisance. Sometimes being tough and simple isn't enough when the environment shifts. The F-23 was a screaming jimmy of the sky, powerful and unique, but it didn't fit the modular, low-risk future the Pentagon wanted. They wanted the F-22 because it felt more like a known quantity. But now, we are seeing the cost of that choice. The F-22 is expensive to fly and lacks the range we need for today's threats. This brings us to the elegant engineering trap. In the engine world, there was a motor called the Max Force. The company, Navistar, bet everything on a simple solution for emissions called Advanced EGR. They told everyone that their competitors were being too complicated with extra tanks and fluids. They called it elegant engineering. But that simple solution ended up melting the engines from the inside out. The heat was too much. Turbochargers failed. Oil turned to sludge. The F-23 was the opposite. It was almost too advanced. Its design was complex. The Pentagon was scared it would become a maintenance nightmare like the Max Force. They chose the F-22 because it used traditional tails and engines that felt safer. But today, the new F-47 is going back to that risky look. It uses a tailless design with canards, small wings near the front. It looks unconventional, just like the F-23 did. Why is the F-47 doing this now? Because of digital engineering, we don't have to guess anymore. Supercomputers run millions of tests before a single bolt is turned. We can optimize every angle for maximum stealth while keeping the jet agile. The F-47 is built to stay ahead for decades because we can plug in new AI algorithms or weapons whenever we want. Speaking of weapons, these new jets are carrying stuff we've never seen. We are talking about hypersonic missiles that fly so fast the enemy can't even track them. We are talking about directed energy weapons, actual lasers. The F-47 and F-A-20 have larger internal bays to carry these giant missiles while staying invisible. And here is the kicker. These planes don't fly alone. Every F-47 will control two to five AI drone wingmen. These aren't just remote controlled toys. They are collaborative combat aircraft that can jam radar, carry extra bombs, or even take a hit to save the human pilot. When America buys 185 F-47s, they are actually getting an air force of over 900 aircraft. China has nothing that can match that level of teamwork. But what if speed is the best stealth? That is the theory behind the SR-72 Dark Star. This plane is designed to hit Mach 6. That is six times the speed of sound. At that speed, you can fly from New York to LA in 12 minutes. Most air defense systems, like Russia's S-500 or China's networks, are built to find stealth planes. But they can't beat pure speed. By the time a radar sees the Dark Star and tries to lock on, the plane is already gone. It's like trying to swat a fly moving as fast as a bullet. The Dark Star uses a combined cycle engine. It starts like a normal jet, but at high speeds, it switches to a scramjet. This tech is so hard to build that people thought it was science fiction. But Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works, the same team that built the SR-71 Blackbird, has been unusually quiet lately. In the defense world, silence usually means they just change the game. So why was the F-23 killed? It was killed because the military wasn't ready for the future it represented. It was faster and more stealthy, but it was a lone wolf. Today's world is about command nodes and drone fleets. It's about 360 degree stealth and Mach 6 speeds. The F-22 is retiring soon. The F-47 is taking its place. The Navy is fighting for the F-A-20.
And while China and Russia show off their prototypes, America has been flying the real deal in the desert for years. We didn't just stay ahead, we pulled away. The race for air power is already over, and we won. Think about the B-21 Raider again. It costs 692 million or each. That sounds like a lot, but the old B-2 cost 2.2 billion. We built something three times as good for one third of the price. That is how you dominate. You make the enemy's billions of dollars in radar systems look like junk. If you think American engineering is still the best in the world, type proud in the comments. We have more stories about the tech keeping us safe from the B-21 to the secret Link Plumeria program. But there is, but, something I haven't told you yet. Everything we just talked about, the stealth, the speed, the drones, is useless if we don't have the right pilots. And the Air Force is already training them for a world where they control robot swarms from the cockpit of an F-47. But there's a catch. If we stop funding the Navy's F-A-20, our aircraft carriers might enter the 2030s without a sixth-generation answer at sea. China is already testing their own sixth-generation designs for carriers. If we don't get this right, we could be dangerously outmatched in a fight for the Pacific. The F-23 was the superior jet that lost. It's a warning. You can have the best tech, but if you don't have the right strategy, the right budget, and the right industrial base, you lose. The F-47 and the B-21 are the military's way of making sure that never happens again. They are built to be affordable, modular, and absolutely lethal. America is pulling off a win that China never saw coming. We locked in contracts for two sixth-generation fighters while they were still looking at drawings. The F-47 takes flight in just three years. The future of air combat is arriving faster than anyone expected. But there is one more secret about the SR-72 Dark Star that most people missed. It's not just for taking pictures, it's being designed as a strike platform. Imagine an aircraft moving at Mach 6 launching a hypersonic missile. There is no defense on Earth that can stop that. It creates deterrence through strength. When the enemy knows we can see everything and strike anything without being stopped, they think twice before acting. The F-23 might be a ghost of the past, but its spirit lives in these new machines. It was the plane that showed us what was possible, even if we weren't ready to build it. Now, we are ready. The F-47, the B-21, and the Dark Star are the new kings of the sky. If this look at the future of air power opened your eyes, hit that like button, we spend weeks digging into these. Classified programs to bring you the truth. YouTube thinks you should watch this next video about the B-21 Raider and why it's a nightmare for radar operators. Let's see if they're right. Click it now and I'll see you there. Stay proud. Stay informed. American air superiority is guaranteed.